You can't call this peace. So listen, we still in, in, enslaved, okay? Our kingdom has not come yet. We still have to work to build this country, and we should not. That's why the Bible says, for those who are awake, to leave this country. Because, because a visitation is, is coming here. The law will bring judgment on this country. So you have to know. And we, will be, we will be wrong if we knew this information and did not let you know. And listen, your government is afraid of what we will become once we come together. They are scared because they, listen, they have our history. All the other nations know and remember what we did back when we were home. How we destroyed their, their nation. We were once feared on this earth. We were once respected. And now look at what we've been relegated to. Look at how the TV exploit our women, shaking their behind and sliding down poles. We were once respected as a people. Look at how they have our men, walking with their pants below their behind, man, with a belt tied up tied across. These brothers have belts, man, but their pants are still below their behind. Where did they get that from? So listen, we're not going to be in this, in this plight for too long. Once our kingdom come, we will be one, we will be once again rulers the way we were before. And I'm waiting for that. Okay? I'm waiting for Christ to come back. And this, this should be, this should be a message that we, we all should be stopping to listen to. Especially you elders. This should be a phenomenon right now that you see young brothers out on the street, preaching the gospel, on a Friday night. Listen, a few years ago, at least 50 years ago, what I was doing on a Friday night, I was probably speaking with somebody's book. I was probably somewhere high on my mind. I was over five years ago, six years ago. I'll, I'll be on the street telling the drug to me. But what I'm doing right now, I'm here risking my life to give y'all the gospel. To let you know what's about to happen. That shows that, that shows a lot, man. That you got young brothers who are willing to put down this lifestyle that America gives us and pick up something right. But you'll come to find out that the righteous don't have a word in this wicked society. You'll come to find that out. Read Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1. The man of the Lord was upon me and carried me out the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was filled with bones. So, this is Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. And we can relate to that. And we are currently among dry bones right now. The people who are destitute of their nationality. Who? And caused me to pass by around the bottom. And behold, there were, there were very many in the open valley. And no, they were very, very dry. But we are amongst these dry bones right now. Our people are those dry bones. You are the walking dead. Why are you dead? You have no idea who you are. You lost your spirituality. You lost your identity. You lost your heritage. You lost everything. So yes, spiritually you are dead. Again he said upon me. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. So he asked that same question. Can these people wake up? Only the Lord knows that. Really? Again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, say the word of the Lord. So this is what we do. This is 
is what we do. We coming out and preaching to you dry bones. And telling you, listen, the Lord is trying to talk to you, man. The Lord is calling you. Put down your distractions. Take them headphones out your ear. Put the cell phones down. And listen to what the Lord is trying to tell you. Because the Lord is calling you. But as I said, you're too busy. Many of us are too busy to hear what the Lord is trying to tell us. So we hear to prophesy to you dry bones and say, listen, thus saith the Lord. Read. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring a up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. So here there's the Lord say he's going to wake his people up. And a lot of you don't know there is already an awakening going on. A lot of us are already seeing this country for what it really is. We started to, to find out that the politicians have been lying to us for the whole time. We are starting to realize that, okay, our votes don't even count. We are starting to realize that the promises that we hear every four years from our president is always the same lie every four years. So a lot of us are waking up. And this was prophecy. The Lord said that we will start to wake up. He will start to put breath back into us. Read. I will lay seeds upon you. I will break up flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and I was, and I was commanded. So this is our commandment. Many people ask, oh, why you, who gave you the right to preach? The Lord did. So we have all the authority to come out and tell you, listen, Israel, it's time for you to wake up. We have that authority. There was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bones to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. So this is a this is a, um, the beginning of our people starting to wake up. We starting to realize what the world really is about. We are stepping out of the nature. We're not falling for their conditioning or their programming anymore. We are seeing the world for what it really is. Everything that has been in the darkness is now coming into the light. Read. Really? But there was no breath in them. So our people are waking up, but one thing we lack is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Read. Really? Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, and he commanded, as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, and exceedingly great army. They stood upon their feet, what? And stood upon their feet, and exceedingly great army. And this is why. The, the elite groups don't want you to wake up. They are afraid of what you will become. They are already afraid of who you are. But once, as I said, once you start coming together the way we're supposed to, they are afraid. This is why they had to use the tactic of divide and conquer. Because they know a nation divided against itself cannot stand. So, they, so what they did, they had to keep us separated from each other. This is why they give us the guns so we can kill each other, the drugs. They know who we are. They are afraid of what will we what we will become. 
Read. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are whole, house of Israel. Excuse me, who are these bones? These bones are the whole house of Israel. So this dry bone that was being spoken about is the whole house of Israel. People who have no idea who they are. People who are spiritually dead, who are dejected. The people who are poor. The people who are suffering. The people who feel like there's no hope. That's who this word is for. Now you could go ahead. You could go ahead. So like I said, man, we, we need to wake up. For you to start questioning everything that you've been told. Stop being so complacent. We was never like that. We was once a people who loved truth. So here is the truth for you tonight. Here's the truth for you tonight. What we have to do, like I said, we have to start coming together. That's the main objective, us coming together. Let's stop looking at each other as, as the enemy. And let's point our finger at the real enemy. Because we, we are not each other's enemies. We the same people. We supposed to be together, but we're the other nation that's together. You don't see the Arabs separate from each other. You don't see the other nations separate from each other, but our people, our people are first to kill each other, man. When once we used to die together, now all we do is kill each other. Read that for me, Zephaniah 2. Gather, your, gather yourself together. Ye gather together, O nation not desire. The Lord said, gather yourselves together. Gather together, O nation not desire. We are a people who are not desired. They don't respect us. We are the least respected people on this earth. Look at the media. They think our young men are all about selling drugs and carrying guns and all that. Look at what they think about our women. Especially our women. They think that they're just whores and... and call girls and all, these, all this type of stuff. All we know about is just shaking their behind. That's what they see our women for. So we are the least respected people on this earth. You can't tell me we're not a nation not desired, man. Read it again. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourself together. Yeah, gather together. O nation not desired. Before the decree we bring forth before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. This is why we have to come together. We have to start coming back to We have to start coming back to our God, man. 
we have to start calling on the true name of God. Because these religions is not teaching the God that the Bible teaches. I'm talking about the God of the Hebrews. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God we believe in. We have to remove ourselves from Allah, remove ourselves from Jehovah, remove ourselves from what they call Jesus. We have to start separating ourselves from these religions. We are giving power to their gods, man. They knew what to use the slaves for. We have to start calling on the real God. His name is I am that I am. That's the God. I am that I am. That is the name that Moses received. Exodus chapter 3 verse 13 through 15. I am that I am. That's the God we have to start coming back to. And step away from these Gentile gods. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake! Awake! See the Bible says awake. Awake. Get your minds open. Step away from the television because the television the television is, is another tactic of a distraction and it's a part of hypnosis and all that. Hollywood, the word Hollywood was a wrong that the Jews use to put spells on people. So you sitting down in front of the TV, you are under a spell. All that flickering that you see on the TV and the repetitive sound is a part of your hypnosis. You are being brainwashed to sit in front of the television, day by day. Our people can sit for at least four hours in front of the television, but can't stand 30 minutes to listen to the word of God. We can't spend at least five minutes opening the Bible. The same way you check your cell phone for a message, check the Bible for a message, man. Check the Bible for a message. We have to start treating the Bible the way we treat our cell phones, man. You stuck on your cell phone all day. What to what profit? The Bible says, awake, awake. Okay. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on that strength from Zion. Put on that beautiful garment. O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, there shall no more comfort for people. Uncircumcised and the unclean. So the Lord is saying, wake up. The Lord is saying to wake up, people. It's time for you to, it's time for us to wake up. Time to loosen ourselves from our programming. Step away from the television. Why do you think it's called television program? It's to program you. What have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. So the people who are ruling over us, with, with their feet on our neck, we, we know the oppression. We are, the, the Lord is hearing us moaning and groaning, man. But what they did, they, they gave you a perpetual entertainment to keep you busy. So what they do, they give you hip hop, they give you the party, they give you your Instagram, they keep you in a state of mind where you don't ask questions and where you don't feel you are being oppressed. But I guarantee once you step out, you start to realize what's really going on. 
You don't know that you're being brainwashed until you step out from your brainwashing or from your programming. And like I said before, everything we've been told is a lie. And I mean everything. Everything we've been told is a lie. How long do you want to be lied to, man? It's time that some truth start being spoken out in the public. So look, your pastor, what we doing here right now, your pastor would never do that. Your pastors are afraid of what might happen to them if they come out and expose this world for what it really is. Christ did the same thing, man. If Christ would have walked this earth, he would have done the same thing. He see the evil that's going on. And your pastor and your church will be quick to put him back on the cross again. If he was to walk this earth. And that's the truth. And like I said, man, I'm going to keep repeating. Everything we've been told is a lie. And I can go through a, a, a full list on everything we've been lied to about. We've been lied to in the schools. We've been lied to in the church. We've been lied to in the news. So it's time we start speaking some truth. St. John chapter 8 verse 32 And ye shall know the truth And the truth shall set you free If you want to be free Come back to the truth man Because as long as you in the lies You're no longer free You're a slave Read again St. John chapter 8 verse 32 And ye shall know the truth And the truth shall set you I'm sorry. And the truth shall set you free. So it's imperative that we start speaking some truth. So whether they like it or not, when I say they, I'm talking about the, the elite group. Despite the fact that they don't want us to talk the truth, we're going to do it anyway. Even if it cost our life. Because listen, this right here is a worthy death. If we have to die for truth, we will do it because Christ did it. So those who are willing to follow Christ, listen, you're not going to be liked in society. They're not going to love you. They're going to want to take your life. And listen, Christ died for us. So ain't nothing wrong for dying for Christ. Because it, it was better that I die for, for Christ than die when I was in the gangs. When I was out here walking the street with a blue flag in my pocket. It was best that I die for the truth than, than me dying in a, in, a, in a shootout somewhere, in the project. So this is showing that we all have a second chance to come back to the Father. So listen, we're going to come out with this truth, whether they want to lock us up or kill us. It's important that we come out with what, what we say tonight. So listen, we don't care, okay, we're not afraid of the government, we're not afraid of the police, we're going to come out with the all, man. What have you done for Christ lately? How are you going to show that you're going to give your life up for Christ? Because he did it for you. He gave his life for you. Why not do the same for him, man? So listen, this work, if it costs our life, we're going to do it anyway. We still going to do it. 
and we, listen, we picked up this Bible knowing that they're going to want to kill us with it. We picked it up knowing that our families will separate themselves from us. So it's important. We understand that. But we're not afraid. That's the difference. But your pastor is afraid. St. Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives The disciples came unto him privately and saying Tell us When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world And the what? And the end of the world So here the disciples, right? They ask in Christ What are the signs of, of the time? They are asking What shall we look for upon your second coming? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So the first thing he said to look out for, deception. That's the first thing we should look for. And you can't tell me there's not so much deception. We have so many churches on one block. Which one has the truth? Ten churches on, on each block. Which one has the truth. You got the Jehovah Witness here, the Seventh-day Adventist here, the, Pist the Catholics here. Which one is the truth? Which church did Christ walk into? So that's the first thing we should look for, deception. Read. Matthew 24, 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So, he, so Christ pointed out those who will bring that deception. And who is that? Who is that many that come in Christ's name? Christianity. And I'm talking about modern day Christianity. The brand of Christianity that was brought forth from the 4th century. Under Constantine. So if you want to look for deception, look in your Christian church. That's where your deception is. Read. St. Matthew chapter 24 verse 6. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Every day you turn on CNN, you hear of a rumor of war. There's people bombing the next people, so on and so forth. And listen, little do you know who's funding these wars? These Jewish Zionists. They are the ones behind every war, virtually every war that has ever sprung up in this society has been brought forth by them. And that's not anti-Semitism. I don't care what you call it. I call it truth. They are funding every war. And we are on the precipice of World War III, and you don't even know. We are right on World War III's doorstep. And listen, once they attack Iran, once they attack Iran, it's going to rock this country, man. Believe that. Once they go in Iran, that will be the whole game changer. As soon as they finish with what they're doing in, in Syria, Iran is next. And listen, America has never won a war. They can't even win the war on drugs. You can mean to tell me they're going to win the war with Iran? That's a joke. They didn't even win the war on terrorism. Didn't they just bomb Boston? If they can't win the war on something minor, they're not going to win the war with Iran. Iran is going to fix this country. So this is another sign of the time. Wars and rumors of wars. Um, what's the task? Hold that, get me on um, Matthew 16 and 1. Matthew 16 and 1, get that. Matthew chapter 16, verse.